<sighs> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I'm talking about? Let's uh, uh, let's recap where we were last week. Jamari, what we got? <laughs> what we got, Mel? You bring your notes out today? No. Oh. I was, I was, I was tired. TJ, was she tired. can't even save you this week. You on your own, TJ. I, don't, I remember what you were talking about, though, like kind of at the end. You were talking about a crowd of angels, and then it was like, it was like a crowd of angels, and then the devil was in the back, and he and then God. I was remember like, learning about. I remember talking about Satan. And God said Satan is gonna get somebody said, "Oh, you can't be here." And you're like, "Just leave me do it. I don't need that." Boy. What? I remember we were talking about Satan, and then he was in a group of angels, and he was in the back. Well, that's how you like to imagine it. He was in the back, and then God was like, "He was like, here, here." And then he said something. I think that's like that's what I remember. Yeah. Or something like that. What else you remember? <laughs> you know why? Because you're always sleep. Always sleep. Because <laughs> the hard book can't. Why are we talking about a group of angels and Satan being in the back? Um, How did we get there? Like, what was that? Something about court. It was like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Court. Oh my god. I don't remember what. It was what about David? Tell me about David. What David did? Y'all remember we talked about, you know what I'm saying? Most our God wanted to move against David. And so he 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 moved him to count the people. Right? Joab told him. Joe was like, Joab was like, no, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? Don't count the people. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I hope, I hope you get many more people. Just don't count them. Right? But he counted them anyway. And then we read in another place where it said Satan was moved against him. And we asked the question. We was like, okay, one place said God did it, the other place said Satan did it. And we into a lot of people that might feel like a contradiction. Yes, sweetheart. Okay, come on. Your mom going your mom gonna go get you some pizza. Right? So you know what I'm saying? To a lot of folks, that'll look like a contradiction. But it wasn't because then we went to Job, right? We went to the book of Job, and that's where we saw the group of angels, right? The group of angels came up, and amongst the angels, one of the, you know what I'm saying, one of the people that was with the angels. Was Satan. You know what I'm saying? The most high God asked Satan, he said, You know what I'm saying? Where you coming from? Satan said, Man, I'm going back and forth. So we kind of talked about the role that Satan plays, and that's where the court case came in at. Right? Because we were looking at like Satan is kind of like the prosecution, the lawyer. The prosecution is the yeah. lawyer. Yeah, the, the prosecution is the lawyer or the team of lawyers that's responsible for making sure that you are guilty of something. Right? So if somebody charges you with a crime, it's the police. With the with the backing of the, the the prosecution that charges you for that crime, right? Or or uh, the prosecution rather tries to uphold the charges for that crime. So they find all the evidence to say yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Philip did that, right? That's 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 on the essentially the same team. Oh, the CSI, yeah, CSI, they, you know what I'm saying, they do forensic type evidence, you know what I'm saying, the super scientific type of evidence, you know what I'm saying, at least that's what they say, the boys over here, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying, so, so the, the Satan, that's the role that Satan plays, his job is to find evidence against you and present that to God, right, it's not that he works against God, matter of fact, he works for God, right, he works to further justice, Right now, he doesn't represent justice. He represents finding people, right, and putting people in a place 
to where they go against justice. But his job for the purpose of justice is to show when something is not just right. When something does not work out, it's the same thing. It's a, it's it's what gives him his power is our law. Right. So when you have righteousness, when you have something that says this is the right way to do it, that's where he gets his power from, because now when there's a standard of right, he has something to, to make people go against. Right. So it's important to kind of understand what Satan's role is. Because once you understand Satan's role, then you no longer you no longer in fear of Satan. Now you just talk to the man's boss. You talk to Satan's boss. Because Satan's boss is God. OK. Ain't no reason to disrespect Satan. Ain't no reason to, you know what I'm saying, small talk him. Ain't no reason to, I rebuke you, get out of my way, talk to him like he chump. There ain't, ain't, there ain't no purpose in doing that, right? You know what I'm saying? We talk we talk to and talk about stuff that we have no idea what we're dealing with. When we get to the New Testament, I'm going to show y'all an example of that. Somebody get, trying to cast off spirits and the spirits jump on them because they don't know what they're dealing with, right? It's important that we don't, we don't just follow what other people do, all this stuff that y'all seen in the movies where, you know what I'm saying, y'all ever seen like that? Y'all probably too young to know about exorcisms and all that stuff, right? You ever seen somebody like in a movie like try to, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, he has a demon and they try to get the demons off of him and stuff? Yeah, see, all that stuff, people don't know what they're doing. They think they're trying to, they trying to copy stuff that they think they read in the book, but they don't understand what they read, right? And so that's what, that's, that's what the whole purpose of what we do here is we want to come together and make sure we understand what the book is actually trying to communicate to us in detail. Right. We want to understand the details. That's why we read just about every page of this thing, because we want to understand in detail what is it saying. And when you do that, you'll know, like all the stuff that these people run their mouth about the Bible, they only do it because they don't know it. Right. They never read it. They never picked it up. They just make assumptions. They heard stuff about it. They heard the Bible ain't real. They heard a man wrote it. They heard all these things, but they never picked it up and actually like, oh, that's what it say. Right. And that's not to say that everybody who would pick it up would pick it up and be like, yeah, that's the truth. No. Nah. A lot of people pick it up and be like, that's crazier than I thought it was. A bunch of baloney. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people pick it up and be like, no, that's way worse than I thought it was. But at least you know what we're talking about, right? You know what I'm saying? You can't allow a person to make a decision for you without you having a chance to look at the information yourself or have a chance to understand the information yourself. And that's what it's about when we do this, okay? So um, what else we uh, what else we talked about last week? We talked about David. We talked about the, you know what I'm saying? We talked about him counting the people. Then after that, the Most High God uh, sent the plague on the people, right? Well, no, I'm sorry. The Most High God came to David and he asked him what, what, what punishment would David want? He gave him three options. He said a famine of seven years. He said a, uh, a, run. a running a from, run. yeah, be on a run from his enemies for three years, or yeah, you know, for three months. Three months. Yeah, three months. That's right. And having all these people be sick. You know what I'm saying? She, she ain't got her notes if she's still showing you up. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Who, me? Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for three days. What did David choose? Them being sick for he said hit them being sick for three days. But how did David feel about that after them people started dying? Like he, he started feeling like it was his fault, right? Right? He started feeling like the death was in his hands. You look at it, if you think about the history of where he is, this has been a repeated occurrence since he committed that sin and killing Uriah uh, over his wife, Right? It's been a whole lot of stuff happening that God told him was going to happen. And it's like, oh, all this stuff is my fault. Then yet again, he chose a punishment that people got to pay for. He ain't put So he told God, man, just kill me instead. You know what I'm saying? It's my, it's my fault. He's killing him. And most of like God told him, okay, you can make a little sacrifice. We can go ahead and get this thing over with. So he went to go try to make the sacrifice. You remember the, the, uh, the gentleman that he went to, to to make the sacrifice? He was like, no, I provided you the king. I provide this for you. You know what I'm saying? I, I give you the animals to sacrifice. You ain't got to pay for nothing out your pocket. But David was like, no, I'm sick of people paying for stuff for me. That's how I imagine it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't want people paying for this. I've been making people pay for stuff all this time. No, nah, I got to pay for it. All right? So he paid for it. He made the sacrifice and the, and the, and the pestilence stopped. The sicknesses stopped. Um, so then after that, you know what I'm saying? He has another son, David. And his other son kind of took an opportunity. It was kind of like a quiet time. So he tried to take an opportunity to become king himself. What's his son's name? Grab, grab his son's name for him because I can't think of it right Adonijah. Now. Adonijah, right? So Adonijah, that's David's son. You know, right? He went to go, um, he went to go try to become king. And then after, you know what I'm saying, after he tried to become king, you know what I'm saying, some of the people that David rocked with, like Joab and a few other folks, they went over there to Adonijah to be king. But nobody got any word from David, like, yo, I'm passing the crown down to, to Adonijah. 
right? In fact, David's thought process was a little bit different. So eventually Solomon, who was the son that, that the Most High God himself talked to David, and he told David, yo, your son Solomon is going to be the one that carries the crown from you. He's going to be the next king, right? So everything was set up for Solomon. Adonijah, who's a different son of his, tried to, try to, you know what I'm saying, tried to throw that crown on a little too early. So it caused a little bit of drama when David got wind of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you can kind of imagine David was trying to ignore the whole situation. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want nothing to do with it. But when David, you know what I'm saying, was forced to deal with it because he dealt with Uriah's wife, you know what I'm saying, Bathsheba, right? So he dealt with Bathsheba, Uriah's uh, uh, wife, and then he also dealt, dealt with uh, Solomon, his son, right? And that's Solomon's mom. Bathsheba is Solomon's mom. You know what I'm saying? So he dealt with both of them, and they kind of explained to him, like, this is how it's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? The prophet, rather. You know what I'm saying? The prophet and Bathsheba explained to him, saying, you know what I'm saying, this is how it's supposed to go. And David agreed. So, you know what I'm saying? He made it clear. Solomon was king when that happened. Everybody had to kind of choose up. Like, yo, yo, yo. Adonijah was like, ah, oh, I ain't mean no beef over it. Right? It wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody kill me. Because, you know, that stuff, people will kill you over that type of stuff. And so, uh, uh, we kind of left off where, you know what I'm saying? Solomon is like at the very beginning of his, of his kingdom. You know what I'm saying? He kind of taken over. David's still alive. But David's very old. You know what I'm saying? So, we know he about to die. So, let's, let's, let's pick up right now. In uh, First Chronicles, we actually gonna pick up First Chronicles because what we want to understand is we kind of want to understand what David's plans are. Who remembers when David when David uh, brought the ark? Y'all remember that? David brought the ark. What was happening at that time? Oh, no, 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 no. The ark did get passed around. Then it and then it stayed in place. After it got passed around a little bit, it stayed in one place. And then when David got settled. He went to go get it and bring it with him in Jerusalem. All right. They had a big old parade. Good job. Nobody knew that if you touched you would die. That's right. And then it almost fell. He immediately died, right? And after that, how did everybody feel about that situation? Yeah, they were like, yeah, no, get that thing to Obed Edom. You know what I'm saying? Go get that thing to Obed Edom. So he took it over there and they let it sit in his man's house. And after a while, David was like, okay. He been blessed for having his house. Let's bring it again. So he brought it again, but he tried to do it the right way the next time. All right. So it was a big old parade. Everybody was happy. He is dancing. Everything was good. Right. Then he brought it down. Who remembers what David did after that? Very good, man. And then the Lord was like, wait, what happened? He was something about the sword always being in his house. No, no, not that. Not at that time. Yeah, that's oh, a, I know. I know. What? You talk slow as all outdoor, but guess what? That was absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? That's absolutely right, right? So that's exactly what happened, right? David got there, he got the ark, he looked at the ark, and it's inside this little tent. But he look at this beautiful house, and he looking like, you know, it don't feel, feel appropriate to me that the, the ark of the most high God is sitting in the tent, and I'm in the house. So he said, you know what? I'm going to build a house, right? Most high God came back and was like, no, 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 no. You won't build me a house. I'm going to build you a house. But what the most high God was talking about is he's saying, I'm going to build you a house in the terms of you will be, your, your lineage will be king over Israel forever, Right? So that's what he's talking about. You know, he's talking prophetically, as, as we would call it, right? He was talking prophetically about building them a house, right? But one of the things that the Most High God said is, your son will build me a house. And he's partially talking about the Messiah, but also talking about um, um, Solomon, right? So with David knowing that, that's been David's focus, right? His whole life, that's David. Just think of David as being like this mad scientist. Like, ooh, I want it. Because he wanted to build God's house, but he couldn't do it. Most High God told him not to do it, right? So now David, just think of him as this mad scientist trying to figure out, like, ooh, we can build this house. We probably going to need this, and we going to need that, and we going to need this. So that's kind of where we're about to pick up right now. Is just talking about David's plan, because he got to pass all this down to the new king, Solomon, right? So this is First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 1. First Chronicles 
chapter 28, verse 1. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes of the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course. Mm -hmm. That ministered uh, and the captains over the thousands and captains over the hundreds and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king and of his sons with the officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me. I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah uh -huh. and for the footstool of our God. Right. So he said, ready for the building. So he said, in, in my heart, I, and when you say heart, think of it like mine. When people say mine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like in my mind, I had it to build a house for the Most High God. But watch this. But God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name uh -huh. because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. Right. So he said, you didn't kill too many folks. Right. You've been a man of war and you've shed blood. So for that reason, you can't do this. All right. Let's see. Keep going. I'll be it. Yahuwah, God of Israel, chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Mm -hmm. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler in the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Right. So you see where it said the house of my father, the house of Judah, the house. When it's talking about the houses, it's not talking about an actual house. It's talking about that group. Right. That group of people, that lineage of people. Right. And when we say lineage, we talking about I have a kid. So Zahar, his last name is what? Harris. Right. Just like mine. Right. So Zahar have a kid and the same thing. So you trace it down, you trace that bloodline down and it go all the way. Right. That's what he's talking about when you say house. Right. It would be the house of Harris, right? the house of Philip. Right. Keep going. Watch this. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons. Mm -hmm. He has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the kingdom of Yahuwah over Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Solomon, your son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he be content, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of Yahuwah, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of Yahuwah your God, mm -hmm. that you that you that you possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. Right. So he's telling us right there: had we had our ancestors kept the laws, and they say all these are some of them. Yeah. yeah, leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. No, nah, before that. Keep and seek for all the commandments of Yahuwah. No, he said all the commandments, right? He didn't say, did he say the first 10? He didn't say like all oh, the, the ones that's really important. Mm -mm. He said all of them. Had our ancestors kept all of it, we wouldn't be here right now. Like we wouldn't be in America having to think about like how many people you think like black people is in America right now? Give me a percentage. 2030? No, about 13. That's what they say. Who knows? Yeah, these people be lying. Who knows? They tell us 13. They be telling us 13 since we got here. They ain't never changed. How is it always 13%? I ain't never seen no percentage. It just always 13%. Ain't nothing changed. People be lying to us. Who knows? We probably 2%, 3%. Who knows? Right? Because there's places, I mean, we got the luxury of growing up, you know what I'm saying, in like Las Vegas or LA or you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like different places. And like if you if you go to like a place I right hear like Atlanta, it's like all black people. You know what I'm saying? So you go somewhere like Atlanta, you might think, you know what I'm saying? Like it ain't, you know what I'm saying? The whole world is black. Because that's all you see. Right? You like this boy, you grow up on the west side, you think everybody black. Because this is a small part of town where everybody black. When I first came out here, I went to a school named Sylvestri. Literally, everybody was white. You know what I thought? Hey, nothing but white people in Vegas. Because what you around is what you believe, right? But you you have to understand there are places, right? I went out to, I was just talking, we I went out to I flew out to Austin, Texas. I couldn't throw a rock without seeing a white person. Right? It was all white people. So in my mind, ain't no black people in Austin. 
right? Then I'll go talk to a black person because I, I ended up going to uh, go get my hair cut. You know what I'm saying? And he talked to me. It's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, we here. But we just in this small little corner. It ain't, ain't a lot of us out here, though. Right? So the different places that you go, it's very little black people. Like, very, 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 very little. And that's because we came here as slaves, right? So since we came here as slaves, right, we've been dominated this entire time. We would not have come here as slaves had our ancestors kept the laws, all of the commandments, as the book said, right? Then when we talk about the house, the lineage, right, what comes with lineage is inheritance. Zahar inherited my last name, right? And this, this little house that I got right here, y'all willing, if I can keep it, you know what I'm saying, everything, you know what I'm saying, everything go right, Zahar, or probably Mayala, you know what I'm saying, bro? Zahar, or one of my kids, would inherit my house. Listen, nephew, you just read the law to me. I give my stuff who I want to give it to. Now, he he would just get a blessing. I tell him, Lord, you know what I'm saying, give him strength. You know what I'm saying, Lord? Get your little butt out in front of my face. I do, I do you like uh, Abraham. I get the book now. I do you like Abraham did his boy. You know what I'm Abraham told his boy, now all y'all get away from him. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell him, all y'all get away from me. You know what I'm saying? Give her all my that's stuff. Hilarious. Right? But that's what you look at, right? It's like the, the, the lineage comes with an inheritance. So imagine if I get his little rinky ding house, if we got all our land, that whole land becomes the inheritance of us, right? As our ancestors and our parents passed this stuff down. Instead, we got exiled from our land because of disobedience, right? So if you look over there, who in our land? Strangers. Strangers, white folk. These white folk pretend, not, I ain't gonna say pretending to be us, but these white folks that think they us. They didn't got tricked into thinking that they actually Hebrew. And we got tricked into thinking we not Hebrew. I was at lunch, I was at lunch yesterday with one of, one of my coworkers. And uh, a lot of them, they Indian. You know what I'm saying? There's three of them. I'm sitting, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting like in the middle of a bunch of Indians. And they, they all from India. So they telling me about their homeland. They're like, yeah, this, that, another. So I'm, after, I'm like, yeah, because y'all got that little thing where, you know what I'm saying? Like, some of y'all don't eat beef, right? No, 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 yeah, yeah, it's religious because the Hindus, they worship the, the cows. So, you know, eat the beef. I'm like, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. But I was like, but it's also Muslims out there. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of them don't eat pork. I was like, oh, so you either eat pork or you, I mean, you either eat, don't eat beef or you don't eat pork. And they started laughing. They were like, yeah. I was like, okay, for sure. And so then after that, you got quiet because naturally somebody asked you a question, what you going to do? Answer it. And then after you answer it, what, what do you do as a polite person? Ask them a question. You, know, you go back and forth. So I ask you, oh, y'all from India. Oh, okay. And don't y'all eat this, that, and the other, da, So then naturally what they going to ask me? Where you from? They gonna look at that. it's an uncomfortable conversation because a lot of people know like a white person would never respond to that question. They might ask, "Well, what state are you from?" You know what I'm saying? What because they know what they know what's coming next. These Indians don't know now. You know what I'm saying? These Indians not as familiar with the ways of America. So in a very innocent in a very innocent way, you know what he asked me. So what's your what's your answer to me? And I smile. <laughs> I crack. I was like, well, let me just start with it's a little tougher for me to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We came here as slaves. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody in the table get here, get uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a work conversation. Everybody uncomfortable. You can hear, you can hear, you know what I'm saying? The the the, uh, the forks hitting the plate. You know what I'm saying? Twink, 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 twink. Everybody nervous. I'm like, no, it's all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? I said, listen. We came here as slaves, so it's a little it's a little more difficult to follow. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I can tell you that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I actually just look, I'm making them all in. I was like, I actually just looked this stuff up. I was like, so my great 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 granddad was in Arkansas, and then his daddy was in Mississippi, and I was like, and after that, the record stopped. So I feel like that's where our slavery. You know what I'm saying? We probably got free right there. No response. I'm like, oh, I don't, don't nobody want to talk. I'm like, oh, well, let, no, let me keep going. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, we take it further. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I can assume just from historical records that my people probably came somewhere in, uh, from, from West Africa. He was like, that's the part, you know, they familiar with West Africa. Like, oh, yeah, I got some people from West Africa. Oh, that's a little different. You know what I'm saying? 
Like the people you know from West Africa probably like, you know what I'm saying, like migrated there. He's like, yeah, a lot of them are Indian by ethnicity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So I was like, my people migrated there too, but it's because they got chased out of Europe. You know what I'm saying? Because the Romans were going after them. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you trace us all the way back. We're Israelites. And they're like, you're Israeli? Oh, yeah. Israelites. You know what I'm saying? And after that, everybody just stopped. It's some good pizza. You know what I'm saying? It's good it's <laughs> some good pizza. Right? <laughs> he didn't know what he was doing. Right? But we have a lineage that we've inherited. But guess what got passed down to us? Retribution. By words. Right? When you say by words, is when people call you a name. Just like I've been calling this, right? I've been calling this what? Black? I've been talking about black? What is that? All right, what is that? Yeah, That's country, a byword. What country is that? Yeah, everybody what, everybody what else, that? we got black, right? And then because we got black, the antithesis of it is white, right? But let's just take white, right? We black, black people, right? That's set to the side. Then you got white people. Okay, now let's, white people is a big old piece of the pie, right? Let's break the white people down. How many groups of white people do we got? A lot. What we got? We got Germans. Oh, you got German white people, don't you? You got Russians. Who? European? Yeah, German, oh, yeah. European, that's you got the that's European, that's a continent, right? But within there, you got different groups of European. What's some of the groups? Germans. Germans. Russians. Russians. Ukrainians. Ukrainians. Yugoslavians. Yugoslavians. You English. You got the English French. folks. These are all different groups of people, and that's their ethnicity. That's why, that's why he didn't ask me. The Indian, my, my Indian, my Indian co-worker, he didn't ask me what country are you from? That's that's a different that's a different question, right? He didn't ask me what skin color are you. He didn't ask me what I believe in. He asked me what is your ethnicity is exactly what he asked. Because everyone else, I might be in a different country. I might have a certain religion. I might have a specific skin color. But guess what? I know what people I came from. You're know, like a Chinese person that grew up in America. They never been to China. But they know that's where their people are from. And guess what they're going to say when you ask them? I'm Chinese American. Guess what I'm going to say? I'm African American or I'm Black American or something like that. So them, Chinese, a place, a heritage of people that gets passed down. American, a place, a heritage of people that gets passed down. Me, I'm Black, nothing, right? What does that mean? It's nothing. It's just a color. Right. Nothing that gets passed down with that. It ain't tied to no heritage, ain't tied to an ethnicity. And then I'm American. That does have a heritage and a culture tied to it. Right. But that is where my domination is. So the identity of us that we we inherited a false identity through disobedience. Right. So that's why it's important for us to understand that when we read this book, we can excuse me, we can see where we went wrong. We can see how we can do better. We can see what the most high God requires of us. And by knowing that, just knowing those things alone, it makes us wiser than the average person. Right. It gives us the information where we can organize. All wisdom is, is being able to organize the world. You can organize things in your brain. Right. People do fool. You ever heard somebody say foolish. Right. People do foolish or we, we might call it stupid. People do stupid stuff and foolish stuff. Because things are not organized to them, right? It's just everything is all over the place. So you taking a guess and it ends up being a bad guess and you make a mistake, right? And you look stupid or you do something stupid. When things are organized, you have an order and you say, okay, this comes first, this comes first. Same thing with information. When things are organized, you know, these things cannot be true because I know for a fact these things are true and they contradict it, Right? We learn math. That's how it works. Right. You look at math. They give you a multiple choice. When you understand the math, you know, it's going to say two plus two. Is it one? Is it six? Is it seven? Or is it four? Right. So just based off of your understanding the math is no way two plus two can be one. That don't make no sense. That's out. And you can do a process of elimination until you get to the correct answer. What's the correct answer, sir? Zar, wake up. Stand up. Right. So until you get to that right answer. Right. You you know, you got to weed everything else out. 
Well, that's what this book does for us. The book helps us organize the world in a way that we can weed everything out that don't make no sense. What are we looking at here? Yeah, we inherited the debt of our ancestors. European, Italian, probably hundreds of thousands. That's for sure. That's what we inherited. We didn't just inherit the debt of our ancestors. We inherited the debt of our dog mamas and dads. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> if they that don't even go back that far. That thing rough. You know what I'm talking about? That, that thing rough. Long, you know what I'm saying? That's what that is. Whoever, you know what I'm saying, who, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, we experienced death, you know what I'm saying, y'all y'all and y'all family just experienced death, you know what I'm saying, but whoever seen like somebody, somebody after they die, they post like a cash app or a GoFundMe, saying, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, send some money and this, that, another. The reason why that happens is because we inherit debt. So we got to find a way to pay for it, you know what I'm saying, we got to find a way to pay for these other things. A lot of these white folks, they had life insurance on slaves. So what happened, you know what I'm saying? We slaves, right? I'm a slave, all right? I'm getting whipped on my back, this, that, and that, and then I die. My owner has life insurance on me. What happens? You get paid. They get a lump sum of sum of money because I die, right? So then they get life insurance on themselves. So they got this lump sum of money from me. Then they get another lump sum of money when they die. Where'd that money go? To their kids. Because they dead. They can't take it. So now it goes to their kids or to their family. And then it's life insurance on them. So everybody got life insurance and all this stuff and they die. So the money just keeps accumulating. So when y'all, when y'all grow up, y'all gonna start seeing, or as y'all grow up, I ain't gonna say when y'all grow up, but as y'all grow up, y'all willing, y'all gonna start seeing that it's different people in the world that behave a different way, right? You're gonna look at these white folks and it's like, why, why he get to drive a car? Why she get to drive a car? You know what I'm saying? And when she's 16 or different things, you know what I'm saying? Different things that, that, that kind of happen. And you gonna understand. You have to understand that a lot of people come from different situations, right? They didn't inherit debt. They got to just. They got to hit the ground running, right? The average white person don't have like. Let's say I got a little bit of money. Everybody I know is broke. All my friends, all my family, everybody I know is broke. So when I got money, a lot of my money is going out. I just had somebody today ask me for money. I'm loaning money or giving money to a lot of people. Constantly, right? So me having a little, I could be making the exact same amount as one of my white coworker friends, right? We could both be making the same amount of money, but my money has to be stretched to many more places because them, they look around and all of their friends got money just like them. Most of them got more money than them, right? They the low, they the bottom of the totem pole in their world. I'm the top in my world because I got a little bit of money, right? And we make the same amount, so it's a different situation. They don't have to spend as much money. In fact, they get gifts from their, their family and from their friends that help increase their riches where they don't have to spend money on a car because somebody took it. Me and my huh? coworker was talking about how we bought our first house. Mm -hmm. And my coworker was like, the lender had the nerve to ask me if somebody could gift me the funds for my down payment. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what? Like that happens? It do for some people. <laughs> right? It do for some people. And it's very few. Of our people that's that how you are know able it's to common do that. among them because that's even an option. Yeah. No, you got to put that on the paperwork. Yeah. Or, or that's a, that's a part of the survey. Like, it's like, no, you have to ask that question. Somebody's going to give me $20,000 right now. Like, are you, you know crazy? Don't disrespect me. Like right. I don't even know nobody that got to you know Take my little $20. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. All right. Let's keep going. And he said unto me, Solomon, your son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as it is this day. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of Yahuwah, your God, that you may possess this good land mm -hmm. and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. Mm -hmm. And you, Solomon, my son. Know thou the God, the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For Yahuwah searches all hearts and understands all Im imaginations of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you seek him, he will be found of you. Mm -hmm. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. That's right. Take heed now, for Yahuwah has chosen you. Gotta, we have to believe y'all when he say this stuff. He's telling us, if you seek him, what's going to happen? He will be found of you. That's it. So if a person say they seeking God and they still sinning, what that mean? Not. Stop that line. You ain't seeking God. You running your darn mouth, but you're not seeking God. Right? 
I've tried to seek him, but you know what? God just, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? He just, for some reason, no, stop that. Don't put that on him. I believe the man when he said, if you seek him, he'll be found. But then he also say what? If you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. That's a position that a lot of people are in. A lot of times we just got to admit the real and what we're, what we're doing. Right? That's the hardest part. We got too much pride to admit. Oh, no, I'm walking against God. And I'm doing it because I want to do it. Right? And I do it because I prefer to do it. Because, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes it's fun. Right? Sometimes it's fun to go do these things I ain't supposed to do. To get this attention that I'm not supposed to get. Sometimes, like, in the moment, like, that's what I prefer. Okay, for sure. Well, be honest about that. Don't put that thing on God. Right? Don't put that thing on God. All of a sudden, something starts going bad, man. God, always. My life, always. That's, you know how people always, we always, we all get to line ourselves. Man, my life, always. Nothing ever go right for me. Get the line, running our darn mouth. We don't take no full inventory of what go right for us and what don't go right. Some people will look at our darn life, be looking at, we running around holding our head down talking about what don't go right for us. Some people will look at our darn life like, man, everything go right for that person. All of this perspective. But we like to say stuff to ourselves that's not true. We like to lie to ourselves and make ourselves feel better. Comfort ourselves with lies. We need to be honest with ourselves. Like, no, nah, I'm walking against God. And if something do go wrong in my life, I deserve that. When was the last time I, when was the last time I dedicated myself to God? When, when was the last time I looked into the world, had an option, uh, a bunch of different options and choices? When was the last time I said, you know what? I'm going to choose the, cho the choice that glorifies God the most. No, nah, we too busy trying to be cool, trying to get attention, trying to uh, get attention, trying to be seen, trying to be liked, right? Okay, well, that's the choice we made. But then when something go wrong in our life, guess what? That's the choice you made. It's different when you make the right choices and stuff feel like it's going wrong in your life. Because either way, it might go wrong. Be clear. You know what I'm saying? Either way, it might feel like it's going wrong. But it's different when you know that you're doing everything that you can to serve the most high God and stuff don't feel right. Because when that happens, that means you got something coming that's real good. coming, Right. That means something being stored up. You suffering for the sake of the kingdom. The suffering a lot of us doing, man, ain't for the sake of the kingdom. We suffering because we deserve it. Suffering because we ain't living right. Right. It's a different level of confidence and wisdom when you obey God. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, a lot of us lack wisdom. And the reason that we lack wisdom is because we don't have obedience and knowledge of God. When that happens, man, you start to sort out the world. The world makes sense to you. All right, keep going. Watch out. When David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries. Look at this. And of the upper chambers and of the inner parlors. Look at this. The palace and the place of, mercy, of the mercy seat. Uh-huh. Look at this. He, David gave his son Solomon the what? The pattern of the porch. The pattern. What does that mean? Blueprint. He gave him the blueprint. Whoever heard of Freemasons? Y'all might be a little young. Y'all may not. Y'all ain't never heard of Freemasons, huh? Freemason. You never heard of Freemasons? So when y'all get a little older, y'all gonna start hearing about Freemasons, right? They have. Whoever heard of a secret society? You ever heard that term, secret society? So there are secret societies, right? And what that's talking about is secret communities or secret groups of people. That kind of like they don't publicize their rules and they don't publicize how they operate and all that. You ever heard of Freemasons? No. So, you know what I'm saying? They don't publicize what they do. It's one of these groups called Freemasons, right? The Freemasons, what they do is they take people and they give them a different level of wisdom and knowledge, right? And they set them off in the world. They have this community. They look out for each other. It's a lot of things that go, I don't know the inner workings of it because it ain't none of my business. But, it's, it's a lot of thinking around that, right? So one of the gentlemen that used to come to our Bible study long, long, long time ago. Tell us right, I said, leave him alone. He was a Freemason, right? But he didn't tell me he was a Freemason. He just he used to sit here. He used to uh, watch the Bible study. And after it was done, he'd give me a call. And he'd always try to argue with me on certain things. And I'd be like, no, 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 this is what it actually said in the book. It almost like he was testing me, right? And one day he was like, man, let's uh, let's have lunch. So I'm like, yeah, because at this point, all of our conversation had been about the Bible. So I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do it. You know, let's have some lunch. So I get the lunch with him. 
And he starts to, you know, do his regular thing, ask me about stuff in the Bible. We're talking about it. And then we start talking about a man named Hiram, right, which we're about to hear about, right? But we start hearing about a name, name, man named Hiram. He's like, yeah, you know Hiram, right? And I'm like, yeah, Hiram, yeah, that's the one that David and Solomon dealt with. He's like, yeah, do you know Hiram? He built the temple. He's like, yeah, the design to the temple came from Hiram. I was like, oh, yeah. At this time, I was newer in the works. So I'm like, yeah, I think I remember something like that in the scripture or something like that. I didn't go back and read it at the same time I was talking to him. I was like, yeah, I think I remember something like that. He was like, yeah, he, uh, he, uh, he, he helped design the, the temple. I was like, oh, that's crazy. He's like, well, yeah, Hiram is the guy who started the Freemasons. He's like, do you know who the Freemasons are? I'm like, Freemasons? Like the ones they be, like the rappers? You know what I'm saying? Because they... Illuminati and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what I was talking about. I was looking like, that what you talking about? Benjamin Franklin. You know what I'm saying? Like throwing up the diamond. And, you know, it's all these little hand signs. That that Freemason, like the, the Illuminati. That what you talking about? He was like, no, 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 no. It's not that at all. So he started breaking it down, trying to explain it to me. And I'm interested because I'm like, what, you know what I'm saying? What are we talking about? And he was like, yeah. So he was like, really, the Freemason holds all the knowledge, the stuff that is not written down in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? It's a verbal tradition that's been handed down from the time of Hiram to now. And we have that knowledge. And I was like, you look, we can talk about anything. We can talk, we can talk. But then I can organize the world based off of the scriptures. So when you say certain things, it's like that doesn't compute. You can't tell me something verbally that contradicts the scripture. So at that very moment, I said, well, let's figure out about this guy, Hiram. What you say? Oh, let me just look into this. And I read it, and guess what I go to? Right here. He got the patterns. Who had the patterns? David got the patterns. Did we read that Hiram gave him these patterns? Oh, let's see who, who he got these patterns from. Then David gave Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch, and uh -huh. the houses thereof, uh -huh. and of the treasuries thereof, uh -huh. and the upper chambers, uh -huh. and the inner parlors, uh -huh. and, the pa and the place of the mercy seat, mm -hmm. and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts. Of by the who? Of, by the spirit of the courts. All of the patterns that he had by who? The spirit. That got that. These people will tell you anything. Because they take something. There's really a guy named Hiram in the book. We're about to read about him. Right? There's really a temple that got built. And David really did get the pattern from somebody. Now, if somebody lie to you and say, well, Hiram, who was involved, Hiram provided material to build the temple. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Or Lebanon. Somewhere. There's one of them. Yeah. Hiram provided the material. Right? But you can take that, switch that one little fact, and if you don't know the scripture well enough, you'll believe it. So now you would start to attribute glory to the Freemasons above the scripture because guess what? They have this verbal knowledge that's been handed down from generation to generation, right? And some of it is even greater than what's in the scripture, right? Those are the types of things that if you know the word, People cannot trick you. It's a lot of people that go into show business, that go into different walks of life, that go into I'm I'm walking with the, I'm walking with my all my coworkers, and what they try to do is always like a like a peer pressure. Guess what they want to do after we we go out and have our outing? We did an escape room. You ever did an escape room? You locked in a room, you gotta kinda of figure out all the little clues to get out of it, right? So we did that. I'm like, all right, yeah, I kinda got it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, let's get up out of here. Right? Like, oh, wait, wait. Let's uh let's just find something else to do. I'm like, okay, let's figure it out. Guess what they want to do? A bar. I'm like, I'm not going to a bar. No, 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 no. You know, we won't go to the bar. Let's just sit at the table. I was like, okay, sit at the table. Guess what? Everybody order. Drinks. <laughs> I was like, I'll take a lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and give me a lemonade. Sit with it for a little bit. I was like, all right, man, y'all a little out of my league. I'm about, I'm about to get up out of here. No, 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 I am about to go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I will catch y'all later. This just because guess what? You get around people in that environment, and all it is is a pool. It's a pool. Right? It's a pool. And what, what people do is people want to make sure that you 
or compromise like them. Right? Because I can trust you then. Anybody ever watch like a gangster movie? Who gonna do a crime? Just who just gonna do a crime with somebody who they know will never do crimes? What you gonna call them? What you gonna call them? Huh? You know what you gonna call them? We used to call them a mark. You know what I'm talking about? A square. You know what I'm talking about? We call them boys a square. A mark. You know what I'm saying? You know what that term mark, when we call somebody a mark, you know what that came from? You a target. Yeah, you getting marked out. Like You a target. Like You know what I'm saying? So it's like you a target for somebody to take advantage of. Mark for being chump. So in the street, you know what I'm saying? When you in the street and you doing criminal activity, it's all about, you know what I'm saying? It's all about moving and shaking. You got to be with whatever's coming. If you're somebody who has, your, your objective is to not commit a crime, you're now a target because now if I commit a crime against you, I know you ain't going to do it back. I know you ain't got nothing to return for me. If I rob you, I know you ain't got nothing on you that's going to stop me from robbing you. So now you become a target in the street, a mark, right? Somebody marked you to, for you to be attacked, right? So nobody's going to do a crime with that type of person because guess what? If the police come and we get caught, that person is a civilian. That person is going to tell. Man, look, I ain't had nothing to do with this. Is that the other? That was Philip. Philip did this, that, and the other, that, that. Right? So a criminal is not going to want you to ride with them unless they know you with it too. Right? Even um, even like if you watch a lot of these uh, mob boss movies, right, you'll see that, you know what I'm saying, like before the drug deal go off in the movie, they'll say, hey, you sniff some coke yourself just so I know you're not a cop. Oh, yeah. And you do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do in the movie. Good, good. They do all that stuff. The reason why they depict that is because that comes from a real place. People want to make sure that you're compromised so that they feel comfortable with you. You don't want nobody to feel comfortable with you. As soon as people can feel comfortable with you, you lose your leverage. Right? Keep your leverage. Keep your integrity. Even if people don't like it, they respect it. Even if they hate you, they respect you. I'm telling you, it's not a lot of people that love me. I don't care what people say. Right? It's not a lot of people in this world that love me. But it's, man, you can't find a whole lot of people in this world that's going to disrespect me. There's a lot of people that talk behind my back to the day that I hear about it because I got people around me that respect me. So they will tell me, hey, so and so say, I hear it all the time. I've been hearing it since I was in high school, right? Constantly, right? And guess what? None of them, very few of them at least, will disrespect to this day. I ain't in the streets no more. I ain't a tough guy. I ain't none of that stuff. But to this day, there's not a lot of people that would disrespect me. And the reason is two things. One, I'm not disrespectful to other people. I don't do nothing to nobody. I'll be chilling. I'll be, you know what I'm saying? I look out for just about as many people as I can, right? But at the same time, I keep my integrity, right? I'm not about to sit here and do, I'm not chasing nobody to be cool. In my whole, most of my life, I'm not chasing people to be cool. I did what I wanted to do. I did what I thought was cool. I did what I respected to do. And now that I serve the most high God, I do what the most high God want me to do. And I do what he respects. So now people have a certain level of respect for me. That's what you want, not this cool stuff. This cool stuff got you chasing all these other people and it gets you in the mistakes that you're not built for. And then you got to learn to be built for a life that you never intended to be. You know what I'm saying? That you never intended to have. That's where a lot of us came from. That's where a lot of our parents came from. That's where a lot, it came from people being compromised, getting into that compromise and realizing I'm not built for this, but oops, I'm stuck with this, right? I'm stuck with like, I'm stuck with whatever the situation is. I ain't going to get into specifics, right? But we, we stuck, we stuck with life, right? We stuck with the life that, that we made mistakes to get ourselves into, right? And that's what we have to get out of, right? That's why, that's why, that's why, uh, 
That's why David is trying to make sure his son inherits the right things. Hey, God wants you to build this house. I have the patterns. That's what he's setting up right now for his son. Watch this. Keep going. Also for the courses of the priests and the Levites. Oh, all the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord and of the chambers round about and the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the dedicated of the things of the dedicate things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also for the courses of the priests and the Levites and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord and for all the vessels of the service in the house of the Lord. He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight for the candlesticks of gold and for their lamps and gold by weight for every candlestick, for the lamps thereof and for the candlesticks of the silver by weight, both for the candlestick and also for the lamps, according to all the use of every candlestick. Mm -hmm. And by weight, he gave gold for the tables of showbread for every table and likewise silver for the tables of silver all right so he's providing the material right he's providing gold and silver he's trying to give everything he can because david's looking like this needs to happen because remember he wanted to do it but he's like, okay i can't do it but i can get everything ready for it here's the patterns he you just imagine how excited he is like man my son about to be king oh, oh you about to be king wait a minute i got all this stuff for you Here's the pattern of what you need to build. And here's the gold. You're going to need this much silver. This, that, and that. So he's getting it all together for him. Watch this. Also, pure gold for the flesh hooks and the bowls and the cups. And for the golden basins, he gave gold by weight for every basin. And likewise, silver by weight for every basin of silver. And for the altar of incense, refined gold by weight and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims. And spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And this, said David. The Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. Look, he said, Yahuwah made me understand in writing. Right? In writing, even all of these patterns. So who had the designs? God. And who did he give them to? David. And he gave it to David in writing. So David could see it, is what he's telling you. Like whatever, however God communicated with him, he like, man, I can see this thing. I have it. It's in writing. Right? Watch this. Even all the works of this pattern. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For Yahuwah God, even my God, will be with you. Mm -hmm. He will not fail you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites. Even they shall be with you for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with you for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man for any manner of service. Also the princes and of the people and all the people that will be holy at your commandment. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom God alone, God, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the for the palace is not for man, but for Yahuwah our for Yahuwah God. Mm -hmm. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God, the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass. The iron for things of iron and wood for things of wood, onyx stones and stones to be set, glistering stones and of diverse colors, all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, mm -hmm. even 3000 talents of gold and of the gold of Ophir. And 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the house with all. The gold for things of gold and the silver for things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of art artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto Yahuwah? Mm -hmm. Then the chief of the fathers of the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds with the rulers over the king's work offered willingly. And they gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents. And 10,000 drams 
and of silver, 10,000 talents, and of brass, 18,000 talents, and of one and 100,000 talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of Yahuwah by hand of Jehiel, the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to Yahuwah. Right. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. So now, after David gave all the stuff he had, now he, you know what I'm saying, they went to the people, and now the people are giving stuff willingly, right? They're just like, oh, yeah, here, take this and take this. So now there's an abundance of stuff. This is exciting for David, because David's like, man, this thing's about to happen, right? David wants to see it, right? He wants to see it happen. He's not going to be able to, right? But he's like, man, this is about to happen. Watch this. Wherefore, David blessed Yahuwah before all the congregation. And David said, blessed be thou, Yahuwah, God of Israel, our father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Yahuwah, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all, and in your hand is power and might, and in your hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of you and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding. O Yahuwah, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name comes of your hand and is yours and is all your own. I know also, my God, that you tried the heart and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy your people, which are present here to offer willingly unto you. O Yahuwah, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts in the heart of your people and prepare their heart unto you and give to Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies and your statutes and to do all these things and to build a palace for the which have I made provision. And David said unto all the congregation, now bless you who are your God and the congregation blessed you who are God, their fathers and bow their heads and worship you who are and the king. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto Yahuwah and offered burnt offerings unto Yahuwah. On the morrow after that day, even a thousand bulls and a thousand rams and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel and did eat and drink before Yahuwah on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon, the son of David, king the second time and anointed him unto Yahuwah to be the chief governor. All right. So they made Solomon the king, which time? The second time. So last week we talked about the first time. All right. So this is the second time. All right. Keep going. To be chief governor and Zadok to be priest. Mm -hmm. And Solomon sat on the throne of Yahuwah as king instead of David, his father, and prospered. And all Israel obeyed him. Mm -hmm. And all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as has not been on any king before him in Israel. Mm hmm. Thus, David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel in the time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron and 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. Now, the acts of David, the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer, and in the book of Nathan, the prophet, and in the book of Gad, the seer. With all these reign, with all his reign and his might. In the times that he went, in the times that went over him and over Israel and over all the kingdoms of the countries. Mm -hmm. So now this is essentially the end of, of David's story. Next week, we're going to pick up back in first Kings and it's going to it's going to, you know, walk us through, you know, David dying and then take us through the beginning of Solomon's uh, kingdom. Right. But now this is a new era. Right. It's a new it's a new place that we, we reach. Right. We've reached uh, we've went we've gone through a lot as a people up to this point. Right. All right. We fast forward through Genesis. Right. We got Genesis. You got Adam and Eve. We talked about that. Adam and Eve start having kids and you get to Noah. 
you know, the big flood, Noah makes it out, only eight of them that make it, and out of that, you get the world kind of divided into these different groups, right? And you got, you got, you know what I'm saying, the children of Japheth, you got the children of uh, Shem, you got the children of Ham, right? They go to Africa, and they go to different Europeans, and they got, you know, us that's kind of like in the middle of all of it, right? Then, from there, the Israelites come about through, through, through Abraham, right? Then Israelites are enslaved inside of um, Egypt, right? Then we make it out of Egypt. Moses, Moses takes us out of Egypt. He gives us laws by, by the hand of God, right? And then he gives us and makes us our own nation. We become our own country. Then after that, then we got the times of the judges after Mo Moses died. Moses and Joshua, right? We got the times of the judges. You, know, you got Moses and then you got Joshua. Yeah. Then you got you got you got the times of the judges that goes on and everybody doing whatever they want to do. Right? Then after that, you got the time of kings. Right? So you got you got uh Saul, Saul that comes first, then you got David. Those are kings that mostly unified the whole kingdom. They were our first two kings. Now you got Solomon. And you see with Solomon as our third king. It was said about Solomon that nobody had the majesty that he did. In other words, nobody had the glory that he did, right? Nobody had the rulership that he did. He had the most command at this point, right? The first two kings, David and Saul, didn't have the type of command. So under Solomon, we were an empire. We end up being becoming an empire. We're going to read about how it ends up being becoming. But even at the very beginning, before we become an empire, he has he has more command. That's how he gets to the empire stage, right? Because he has more command. Why would he have more command? His name is peace. You got our first king. Just think about it, right? The first time you go out and do something might be a little rough, right? Might be a little rough. Might be a little difficult. You're still trying to figure it out. People aren't even used to having a king, right? Okay. Second king come around. It's still a little rough. But man, he's a good guy, David. He's a wise king. Right? So then David has a son. If David is a celebrity, <clears throat> and he's the man, and everybody like him, and he stamped his son, his son good looking, and he's also wise. Right? That sets his son up to where he has a starting place that's even greater than David was. So now he can take it to a higher, a higher place. So he starts off with a lot of respect of the people just based off of the fact that he come from his dad. Right. That's very important to understand because you're going to see the rest of the story that other kings as Solomon dies and other kings die that we're going to read about. They inherit what their father had. Right. And you're going to kind of see that play out in a lot of the stories that we're about to read right now. It's about to get real rapid. Right, it's gonna be rapid for a little while until we start to get to the prophets. Then we're gonna start tying in the prophets to to the kings and everything. So it's gonna slow it down just a little bit. But it's about to be rapid fire in a little bit. For you know what I'm saying, for probably the next couple of weeks, it's gonna be rapid fire. So it's a, you know what I'm saying. We we got a lot of kings to go through. We got 20 kings on each side. Right, so 20 kings on each side. 20 kings. Our kingdom is gonna split after Solomon. So we're gonna read about that probably not next week, but the following week. It's going to split out to Solomon. And we got 20 kings of Israel and about 20 kings of Judah. Right? Do you want to get into Ecclesiastes and Liberty of Proverbs during this time? Or no? Nah, I'm not going nah, to get into it. I'm going to focus more on the narrative. Yeah, on the narrative. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, we we probably going to pull some stuff out of there. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm not going to read through the whole books. Come be like Job. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to read through the whole book. But after we're done, I think we probably should do a couple studies on just those, you know what I'm saying, just to make sure we knock them out. Um, but yeah, any questions? <laughs> All right, let's pray out. <laughs>